Um, thank you for joining us on today's live webinar. And this time we're bringing you something slightly different. So we're bringing you a mock redundancy case study live to your living rooms and your offices as well. So today we're going to be running through a scenario with you right from the initial at risk meeting through to the dismissal and you will be watching it unfold in front of your eyes today. Um, I'm Oliver Tasker, I'm a partner in the employment team at Wilkin Chapman in the Lincoln office and I'll be really providing the commentary today and the tips as we go through the scenario. I'm joined by Katie Davies, who's a partner in the Grimsby office, who's going to be playing the role of Mrs. Boss. And we've also got Lily Darwood, our trainee, who's going to be playing the role of employee today. So perhaps at the end, we'll see if we'll do a vote to see if they've got budding acting careers rather than legal. And it's not too late to change, I don't think. So we'll find out at the end. So as you all know, the coronavirus job retention scheme has been extended now until the end of September. And really that's going to push back any potential wave of redundancies. And that was always the concern um, by businesses and also obviously the government and Rishi, and it was all part of the announcement to extend the job retention scheme. So the latest figures show that 4.7 million people still remained on the furlough scheme at the end of January. So that really shows to you and demonstrates the high dependence that businesses still have on the retention scheme, particularly for such areas as hospitality that remain closed. So which really brings us to our first poll today as well, please, Taryn. So we are going to be asking for your input as well at various points today. You're not going to get away with it. So get your voting fingers ready. Um, it is anonymous, so don't be concerned by answering the poll, and you'll see it on the screen now. Have you, as a business, made redundancies to date? Options being yes, no, potentially planning for the future, or will decide at the end of furlough and see what the world looks like at that stage. Hopefully the poll's popped up on your screen and you'll be able to answer that. I'll give it a couple more seconds while everybody has the opportunity to vote and we'll see where you are as a business community. Lend that there now. So a bit of a mixture really, a balance between yes, some have, no, and planning for the near future. Um, so it's a good split in reality and it's probably reflective of overall where we are um, in the business community in the business world at the moment. Now what the Bank of England is predicting is that the rate of unemployment is unfortunately going to rise to about seven and three quarters, eight percent. So that forecast is actually slightly down from what they were initially anticipating last year at the height of coronavirus and lockdowns. So it was forecast about nine to 10 percent. Currently, the stats show that we're sitting at 5.1 percent, and that amounts to 1.64 million people who have unfortunately out of work and lost their jobs. So with that in mind, it really brought to focus that we'll do the um, mock redundancy case study today to highlight the importance of getting everything right if you are planning for the future. So Taryn, if you can share the, the document and the scenario for us to have a look at, and I'll explain that to everybody. So today we're going to be looking at High Tech Sound Systems Limited, and in particular their admin screen, which, uh, sorry, their admin team, which you can see on screen now in terms of the organisational chart. So a bit of background, High Tech Sound Systems, they sell and install audio speak systems for domestic and commercial use. As you'd expect, demand has been significantly impacted by COVID-19 and their profits have unfortunately fallen dramatically. In particular, the commercial division has suffered significant decline because we've obviously experienced the closure of bars, restaurants, retail venues, which is a big source of their work. So the company, like many others, as we've seen as well, um, have made use of the job retention scheme to date. 
but they've decided they need to make some planning decisions for the future in order to safeguard the future of the business itself. One department that's seen a dramatic impact on their work has been the admin function, which we can see on screen at the moment. So in this scenario, you'll see the current structure, which has an admin team leader and then four administrator roles, one of those being Lily, the employee that we're gonna hear from today. Now the proposal of the company is that they no longer need the four administrator roles and this will be reduced to two individuals. So really today, we're not gonna delve into whether a redundancy definition itself can be satisfied, which is obviously one of the key steps with a redundancy scenario, but we're gonna be looking at the consultation process itself. And we're gonna have practical tips, guidance as we go along. And really we're gonna be hearing from Katie, Mrs. Employee, Oh, sorry, Missy, as we go along. There'll be some documents as well that we'll share on screen as we go along. Don't panic if you don't get a chance to take all of that in because we'll send those out on email afterwards for you to have a look at following the se session. Also, if you've got any questions as we go along, pop those in the chat box at the bottom. And when we get to the end, we'll have a Q&A session. You'll also have the opportunity to raise your hand if you're happy for us to cut to you live to ask your questions. So without further ado, that brings us to our first at-risk meeting and over to Katie and Lily. Thank you, Ollie. Okay. Right, hello, um, Lily. Thank you for coming to see me today. Um, I'm, no sure you, I'm sure you've probably been a bit apprehensive about it. Yes. Okay, well, as you know, we supply sound systems for domestic and commercial businesses. And the last year has just been, well, crazy. We've got this worldwide pandemic. We've never seen anything like it before. Yeah. It's affected all businesses, not just our business. And as a result of that, there's been times when we've been closed. And there's been times, even when we're open, that we haven't got the orders. Yeah. The commercial side, you know, the bars, the venues, all these places where all these youngsters go, they just don't want these audio systems because they're closed. So our orders are down, our profits down. I mean, you must have seen in the admin team that there's less yes, work. It has, yeah, it has been quieter. So unfortunately, we've got to look at what we can do. We've obviously furloughed people. You've been furloughed for yeah. a period of time. Yeah, last year. But it's just not gone far enough. So what we've had to do is we've had to review the business, Lily. And we've had to look at if we've got too many people, what changes we might have to make. Okay. And from that, it looks like the admin team, we might need to look at some changes. So obviously you work in the admin team. I'm the Mrs. Boss, the top boss, as you know, the all important boss. And then we have the team leader. And then we have you and the other three administrators. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's right. So obviously there's been less admin work. So we think from this review that potentially there's too many administrators in the team. Right, okay. So what we've done is we've identified that in the admin team you work, that we need to potentially reduce the number from four to two people. Okay. okay. Yeah. So what that means is we have to put you at risk of redundancy and all the other three as well, it's not just you, Lily, and we have to follow a selection process because obviously we've got to get rid of someone, haven't we? So I know this will be anxious and a horrible time for you. So to make it a bit easier and a bit quicker, because I'm sure you'd rather know rather than having it hanging over your head, I thought I'd go away and basically do all of it before. Okay. So what I've done is, you know, there's a selection matrix that we have to do because the lawyers tell us that. So we have to do what they say, obviously. So, you know, we filled it in and stuff. And um, I basically did it before, just so at least I can tell you what the score is. Right, okay. Then. And your score, unfortunately, is 17. Okay, right. Um, I mean, I, would, I just wondered if I can ask, um, what are the criteria and skills that you've considered? Will this be explained to me at all? Well, now you don't, you don't need to worry about that, right? But we've got things like, you can take a copy of it with you, but we've okay. got things like length of service, attendance record. So the lawyers have checked it, it's all fine, okay? Right, okay. Obviously they don't know I filled it in, but I thought it would help you to fill it in 
get it over with, at least then, you know. So, I mean, I've taken into account, you know, your epilepsy, you know, you've got things like that. Right. You're not the quickest. Yeah. Um, okay. And so basically you've scored 17, which unfortunately is the second lowest. Okay. So again, to help you, here's one I prepared earlier. I've added everybody else's scores up, because I've got to be fair, yes. I've done it for everybody. Yes, okay. And you and Mrs P45, you've scored the lowest, okay? Yes. Mrs Safe and Mrs Lucky, they're fine, yes. okay? So they're going to have a job, but you and Mrs P45, unfortunately, you're going to carry on to the next stage. Yeah. So we'll think about other things, and you can have your say later on, but... Um, Obviously, I mean, okay, I know you understand it's... I feel a bit taken back and very anxious. I know the business has been struggling. There's a few things that I, that I think maybe I need to have a think about and maybe would help my position. For example, I've been studying at college recently and I'm not sure who knows about this at work. So I th am I able to comment on things like this or add anything at all? Well, yes, you can comment. But I mean, I've done the scores and, you know, I've told Mrs Lucky and Mrs Safe that they're fine. So it wouldn't be very nice. It's better to get it out of the way. I mean, we all know who's you know, who we're going to keep. And Mrs. Safe and Mrs. Lucky have been with us quite a while now. Right. And, you know, they're slightly older and they've got long service. And the lawyers always tell us about their discrimination categories that they always go on about. So I've got to protect them, really. And, you know, they've scored higher than you. So I think it's probably best. I mean, bring it up at the next meeting. Yeah. But I think, really, you need to accept that you've scored the second lowest. So you are at risk. I've got another letter. I've got a nice little letter explaining all this, because I know it's probably... You know, a lot to take in yeah so it, it explains it all it says about you're at risk it tells you you know we're gonna have another meeting it says about the scoring but i've already done that right um so you can take that away and have a look at it yeah i will do okay yeah that's that's fine i understand what you're saying is there, is there anything else does it make sense is there anything else um, you wanted to add yeah, yeah it makes sense apart, apart from you know i just wondered if i'd be able to add anything but i think you've covered that if i think of anything else um i'll get in contact Right, well, super. Okay. So that uh, was an example of an at-risk meeting. And I think it's fair to say it's a bad example of an at-risk meeting. Things were progressing fine um, with um, Mrs. Boss, Katie, placed in a, informing Lily that she was going to be at risk of redundancy. And then I think it's fair to say that um, we got ahead of ourselves there that we're talking about, that the scoring had already taken place. We'd already notified the employee that she was in the bottom two and was essentially going to be dismissed and the other two individuals had been told they were safe. So that's not a good example of how to conduct the initial at-risk meeting itself. Now what case law has said um, in terms of redundancies, and as hopefully you, you are aware of, in order to consult properly, an employer must have an open mind and still be capable of being influenced basically by the employee about the proposal to make the redundancies, because that's what it is at the very beginning. You are putting forward the proposals of the redundancies that you are going to potentially make. So consultation can only ever be meaningful if it happens at this formative stage. So a word that we often hear is that the, either the redundancy process was a sham, it was a fait accompli, and we hear that and see that a lot in Without Prejudice letters and in ET1 in claim forms where the claim is saying it made no difference because right from the outset it was clear to me that the employer had already made up their mind and that's what we want to avoid. So back to both of them to let's see how the initial at-risk meeting should be done correctly. Right, Lily, thank you for coming today. Yeah, that's no problem. Right, okay, so I'm going to try and explain a couple of things. Um, obviously, any queries at any point, just let me know. I will. I'm going too quick. If you don't understand, please let me know. So, as you know, you know all about our business, you know what we do. Obviously, you appreciate that the last year we've been, you know, hit significantly yes. by COVID and lockdown. One of our big areas is the commercial side supplying to all these venues that are still closed. We don't even know when they're going to open yet. So there's been a significant reduction in all orders, a significant reduction in profit. So we've all felt it, we've all seen it. Yeah. Obviously, you've been furloughed, other people have been furloughed. We're looking at whether we can carry on furloughing people. You know, it's now open until September, but 
We don't think that that's a long term solution, Lily. We've looked at whether we can go into other sectors. We've looked at whether we can take pay cuts. We've taken some pay cuts. We've had our cars taken off us. We've cut back on agency staff. Yes. We don't use those anymore now. So we're continuing to review how we can save costs. But unfortunately, we realise that that's just not far enough. And if we don't look at other actions, you know, it might have a bigger consequence. Yeah. So, as you know, you work in the admin team. Yes. And we've got me, the big boss, the team leader, and then you and the three others. Yeah, that's right. So the admin team has been one area we've identified as potentially having to make cutbacks. Okay. You know, there's less work there. We're struggling to carry on paying you. I know I know a lot of the time you're just hanging around not knowing what to do. Yeah. And I know you want to work, but the work's not there. So what we've done is we've identified that in the admin team, you and the three others are a pool that we're going to put at, at risk. So we've identified that there might be a need to reduce that pool from four people to two people. So what that means, Lily, is we have to put you and the other three people at risk. Yeah. Now, that's only at risk, OK? Redundancy isn't a foregone conclusion. You have to follow a process. Yeah. Now, it's a two way process. I know I like talking a lot, but please engage with me. Yeah. You know, we need to work together. You may have good options, alternatives that I haven't thought about. Yeah. Okay. So I promise you, no decision is going to be made till the end. We'll look at all the alternatives. But unfortunately, if there are no alternatives, two of the administrators may be made redundant. Yes. So you and the other three people do the same role, don't you? Yes, we do. So it's obviously you've all been pulled together. So you're all going to be treated the same and given the same chance. Right. OK, so as you're all great, this isn't a competency situation. You're all amazing. We want to keep you all if we could. But unfortunately, if we've got to keep people, we've got to look at who's got the right skills to keep us going. Okay. So what we have to do is follow what's called a selection process. So what we've got is a selection matrix, and I'm gonna give you a copy in a minute, Lily. Yes, that's um, good. And we're going to apply that to all three, four of you. So I want to give you a copy of that now. Yep. Yep, thank you. And we'll just have a look on screen at what those are. Taryn, would you just, thank you. Right, so here you go, Lily. So no one's done any scoring yet. And the other three administrators will get exactly the same as you. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six criteria. Yeah. And what we're going to do is mark each one out of five. Okay. So you will have the right to feed into me. I'll take that into account. You'll be able to say whatever you want. And I won't score you or anybody else until we've had the next meeting and then we're going to go through each one okay so you'll have the right to have your say we try to pick things that are relevant to our business because obviously different businesses have different needs and also things that are fair the lawyers have checked it you know we're complying with everything but obviously this is going to come a bit as a shock so i want you to take it away think about it and then our next meeting we're going to go through it all now does that make sense yes um, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. I understand the process you've explained. I mean, naturally, it's a very worrying time, but I'll go away and have a think about it and try and get my thoughts together. Um, I just wondered, will you be able to take into account any points that I've got to make in terms of skills and things like that? I've, I've been enrolled on a few business administration courses that I've been doing in an evening recently, and I just wondered whether my qualifications and things that I've gained through that, you, know, you can take that into account. Right, that's great. So sometimes I don't know about these things, Lily, because obviously we're busy, you know, yeah. I'm busy doing all my important sure, stuff. Sure, I wasn't sure who at work would actually know no. about it, to be honest. I'll speak to your team leader as well, because you, you, you work quite closely with your team leader. Yes, yes. And I'll speak to you, but bring any qualifications, any copies with you, you know, it might not be relevant to the skills we need, but please bring it and I'll take into account all those things before I do the score. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I can email that paper anyway. Thank yeah. you. So what I have to give you as well is I've kind of explained some of this, Lily, but it's called an at-risk letter. Right, OK. So obviously, again, you'll go away, you'll have to digest it, think about all of this. But it explains the fact that there's a reduction in work, you've been put at risk of redundancy, 
you know, the business reasons why. There's also the other departments on there that are affected, Lily, because it's not only the admin team. Yeah. But obviously, I'm dealing with you as you I'm the manager of the admin team. And then it invites you to the next meeting. And it's got all those details in here. So I want you to go away again, read that, digest it all. It explains it's a consultation process. It's going to be a couple of weeks long. Things can change. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're not a big business. So, you know, whilst we keep looking for other jobs, at the moment, there isn't anything out there. But that doesn't mean that it won't change. Okay. Yeah. So take a copy of this. Go away. Think about it. Any queries? I'm around all the time. You don't have to wait to the next meeting. But obviously, then we'll take it from there. Okay? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. So that's an example of how to conduct the at-risk meeting itself and you'll see a whole host of differences between the very first one that we saw and the correct way to do it. And the at-risk meeting is to do exactly that and what we saw then is to warn the employee that they are at risk of redundancy. It's not to confirm that they will be made, they are going to be made redundant, it's to warn them that they're at risk of redundancy. Um, Taryn, if you could just share the at-risk letter again on the screen for, for us to have a very brief look at. So one of the, the first important prep steps for a business to take before you start on the redundancy process is to get the at-risk warning letter drafted and right for each area of the business that will be placed at risk of redundancy. So it's always important within that letter that hopefully you can see on the screen, but as I said, we'll send these out afterwards as well, that the letter includes the rationale on firstly why the redundancies are going to be made. So in this case, we've heard that high tech sound systems are um, being impacted on their sales of the audio system, declining order book, and therefore the financial impact on the business has meant that they need to review departments and in particular for for this pool, the admin team. So the at-risk letter explains the rationale. <clears throat> it also states who is affected by it. So we've got within the letter as well, clearly the admin team have been affected and the proposal is to move from four administrator roles to two, but it also explains the other areas of the business as well that are unfortunately impacted and are at risk. Now it's good practice to share a copy of the proposed scoring matrix with the individual. Um, so where you have pools of employees at risk, you need to select who's gonna remain within the business and who's gonna be selected for redundancy through a objective selection matrix, which we'll have a look at a bit later on. But it's good practice to share that with the at-risk letter so the employee can take that away with them after the meeting to have a look at it in full prior to the next consultation meeting. And again, as we heard that from Lily, she's saying, look, there's areas that you're potentially unaware of that I've been doing in my own time that may increase my score. Will you take that into account? So it's good practice to do that. And also then, as Katie and Mrs. Boss explained, really this is the start of the consultation process and period, and we'll work through various meetings and nothing has been decided at this point. Um, so Taryn, you can take that letter from the screen now, thank you. So a case that's often um, you'll hear about, legal case, is that of Polkey. And we don't necessarily always think or remember that it's in fact the leading case on reasonableness in terms of a redundancy situation as well. And Polkey established the principle that the dismissal won't be fair unless the employee has been warned and consulted about the proposed redundancies that are going to take place. So the warning and the redundancy, sorry, the warning and the consultation process are all part of the same process of consultation but it needs to start with a warning meeting and that, and that is now what we've seen and the good practice of doing that correctly and issuing the at-risk letter following that as well. So the next stage in the process is the consultation meeting so I'll hand you back to Katie and Lily. Right hello Mrs. Um, Mrs. Dismiss, Lily, nice to see you again, sorry but you better see my face already. <laughs> Right, so basically, as you know, we had the first meeting where I put you at risk of redundancy. 
and the other administrators have had similar conversations and they've been put at risk as well. Okay. Okay. I explained to you we're going to follow a selection process because the proposal was to reduce four administrators to two. Yes. So you all got the same selection matrix. I'm sure you took that away. You thought about it. Yeah, I did. I've had a look through. But because obviously you're all feeling quite anxious, it's quite a difficult time. You know, I thought it was probably best if we did it before. I spoke to your team leader. I know all about you anyway, Lily. I know all about the others. And I know really who we need to keep. Okay. Because obviously, if we've got to lose two, we've got to keep the people who have got the right skills. So because it's a stressful time, I think it's better to know. I think you surely want to know. So I've prepared one earlier and basically I've gone through it all and you've scored 17. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So I can explain it if you want, but um, I mean, basically, I mean, you lent for service. Great. You got five years service. You got a four. Pretty good. Are you a quick worker? Uh, I put here, you need a kick ever so often and you talk a bit too much. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I appreciate I'm not the quickest in the team. Um, but I'm not the slowest. I think I'm, you know, I just like to ensure I'm completing things properly. I think I'd just add that, if that's okay. Right, okay. Well, you've got a three there, so that's fine. So, you know, again, let's carry on, shall we? Um, attendance record here, again, you take quite a lot of time off your epilepsy. So, I mean, if I've got to get rid of one of you, or two of you, I've got to take these things into account, haven't I? So, uh, you've only scored a one for that. Yeah, I think, so... I think um, if you don't mind, there was a period last year when I had more time off than maybe I normally would but I think overall I generally have a good you know attendance history uh, before this so yeah well you've got a one anyway right carry on um so disciplinary record um there's been a few chats on there so um, not not formal yeah formal. yeah I'm not aware of any formal action or, any, or anything like that um there was a few conversations last year following a uh, period of absence but yeah I've not been made aware of any well I'll, or... well, I'll write that down. But anyway, yeah, it's a three. So um, performance, yeah, okay. Again, fine, three. And um, attitude, three. Apparently, you're a bit moody. Oh, yeah. sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I mean, I mean, I think my performance is, is good generally. I know maybe, like I said earlier, maybe some of the others are a little bit faster. Um, I did just want to note, if you don't mind, I have done a few courses recently and things like that um, that I think will help improve my skills going forward. Um, are you okay to pop, pop that in and kind of account for that? Well, yeah, but it's not really what we're looking for. So, I mean, I write it down, but yeah, I've, I mean, you, you've got 17. So what I've done as well is I've looked at the scores and, you know, that means you're the second lowest. Oh, right. So okay. you and Miss P45, she's been told as well. So it means you've been provisionally selected and you're coming to the next stage of the process. Yeah. So that means that after the end of that, you could be dismissed. But right. um, okay. so I thought it was better to get it out of the way and know. Yeah, I understand what I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I thought I maybe would be able to input in a few more areas, but I understand if that's the process. Yeah, that's the process. We have to tick the boxes. I'm sure you appreciate. Anyway, time is money. So yeah, I'll see you, see you next week. <laughs> So that was the end of the, the first consultation <coughs> um, meeting, which again, I think you'd be fair to say, um, perhaps not how it should be conducted. Next stage of the process makes it sound like it's X Factor. Uh, that's made it to judges' houses, but unfortunately not that good of news for the employee. Um, so brings us to our next poll, actually. If you can start that, please, Taryn. So in your opinion, how should that first main consultation meeting after the at-risk meeting have ended. Should it have ended with pretty much with dismissal, confirming that unfortunately Lily was going to be dismissed? Should the individual have been provided with a matrix to go away, have a look at it, review and then come back subsequently, perhaps at another meeting to provide comments? Or do you think that enough been seen, said, done, and you can look to arrange and invite the individual to a potential dismissal meeting. If you can cast your votes now, and we'll give you another few seconds to answer that. The overwhelming majority um, is fair to say correct to provide the matrix to the individual to go away and review. So there's certainly a few, I suppose, phrases, words that were used within that that would cause 
concern as well, particularly if an employment judge was reviewing what was said in each meeting and if we as solicitors were advising on, on what to say and what not to do. So we heard, we heard that potentially Lily has a, a medical condition um, and potentially a, well, a disability of epilepsy that was taken into account. Um, it was a very dismissive consultation meeting in terms of feedback and scoring. And essentially the scores had already been finalized well before the meeting itself. So that's an, again, an example of, of what not to do is jumping the gun. So really fair consultation involves giving the employee a fair and proper opportunity to understand what's going on again, understand what the proposal is in terms of their position and department, and to appreciate what is going to be discussed and consulted over and to get their views on it as well. So really the key components are, again, consultation at the formative stage before any decision has been made, Adequate information needs to be provided to the individual to respond and take it all in and to be given time to respond as well. So send the blank matrix to go away and consider and really given conscientious consideration of what the employee is raising, not being dismissive and not saying essentially I don't care what you've got to say, you're the one that's been selected. So let's see how that meeting should have been conducted. Right, Lily, thank you for coming to see me today. Yeah, um, it's no problem. I'm sure you're probably feeling a bit anxious about everything. Yeah, very, very worried about it all, to be honest. Okay, well, well, first of all, I want to make you aware that we do have a counselling service. Oh, right, okay. That all employees have access to at any time, but obviously it might be something that you want to take up now. Yeah. Obviously, if you want me to send you details, I will. Yeah, I'll bet I can bear that in mind. Thank that's, you. That's okay. fine. I don't want you feeling anxious. I'm here, the team leader's here. You can talk to us at any time. You don't have to wait till the next formal meeting, okay? Yes. Yeah, that's that's helpful. Thank you. Right, okay. So at the first meeting, obviously, we put you at risk of redundancy yes. um, and said that we were going to follow a consultation process, which yeah. involves both, both of us speaking, you having your say, me listening. And obviously at the end of that process, it may be that somebody in the team or two people will be made redundant. So I explained that because we have to potentially select two, we have to follow a selection process. Um, and I gave you a copy of the selection matrix with the things that we were going to take into account. Yeah, you did. So the purpose of today's meeting is to go through that matrix, allow you to have your say, and then I can go away, think about it, take it all in, speak to your team leader, and then after that, I'll prepare the scores. So nothing's going to be scored today. We'll have the opportunity for you to have your say today, and then I'm going to go away and think about it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So, obviously, you know, this isn't anything about your competency. We think you're great, you know, but obviously we've got to look at each thing and look at the other three as well and see what they can bring to the business. So... The first thing on the criteria, if you remember, was length of service. Have you got a copy with you there? Uh, um, yes. Yeah. Okay, super. So, so I've got on here, you've got five years service. So is there anything you really wanted to add to that? Um, no, not really. I just, like you said, I just wanted to make sure you've taken into account, obviously, I've been here for five years. I've worked in the admin team for three of those. And then, yes, two of those were in another department. But I just wanted to make sure, obviously, that was, that was everything. Um, yeah, the whole time. Yeah, no, that's fine. Please be reassured the whole of your service has been taken into account, not just the service in the admin team. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, that's fine. So the next one is, are you a quick worker? It's about how quick people are, how efficient they are. Yes. Um, yeah, I appreciate maybe I'm not, I'm not the quickest out of the team. I do like to make sure that my work isn't rushed and I'm completed everything properly. Uh, but I do always try to meet the deadlines and I prioritise, you know, the most important things that I have to do each week. Um, I don't think I'm the fastest, but equally, I don't think I'm the slowest. I'm probably, you know, average. Yeah. yeah. But I like to, like I said, just make sure I get everything done properly. Yeah, super. Right. I'll comment all that down. I will speak to your team leader again, because obviously he's the one who kind of on a day to day basis. Yeah, sure. Checks your productivity and, you know, your efficiency and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So attendance record. Obviously, I've seen that you've had quite a few absences recently. So is there anything you want me to know about that? Yeah, I mean, I suppose there was a period last year when I had more time off than usual. Aside from this, I, I think I've had good attendance before and I've not really had any absences since this time. Uh, as you know, I have, I've got epilepsy and I've had a few days off 
here and there due to this. Um, normally it is controlled. Um, I did have a few days off last year, which is more than normal. I struggled to deal with the pandemic and I got really run down at times. Um, are you able to consider the whole of my employment history? I think if you look overall, you know, it's been it's been good on the whole. Well, we've kind of got to look over the last 12 months really, Lily, because obviously you could have Mrs P45 or Mrs Sage saying, what about the previous year or what about this? So I think 12 months gives us a fair reflection. We won't take into account your epilepsy or at least give you some, you know, um, adjustments to uh, account for that. Yes. So it's more the other absences that were for being run down. It's more those that we'll probably have to take into account. Yes. OK. OK. So, again, I'll go away, think about it. Disciplinary record. Again, you've got a clean record, but I can see there might have been some informal chats, but nothing on your record. Yes. Um, I'm not aware of any disciplinary action or, or issues. I suppose I did have a few conversations, I think you might be referring to those with my line manager last year, following the time, some of the time I had off. Uh, but there's been nothing further than this. And like I said, I always thought that these were in informal chats. I've never been told anything was, was going further. OK, that's fine. So um, performance, um, you, you might have dealt with this a bit on the other one where it's about a quick worker. Yes. I, I spoke to your team leader, no, no issues really with performance, but... Yeah. Um, I didn't know if you want me to know anything else. Yeah, I think, like you said, I, I think personally my performance is quite good. I always get my work done. Um, I know some of the team are a bit faster. I just like to check everything, make sure it's all correct, like, like we've already spoken about. Um, I do want to mention, I feel like I've improved my skills recently. I've been on a few administration courses and things like that, which have helped. And I've gained a few qualifications from this and I have some certificates and things like that. Um, I think would help help with the job. A lot of them relate to, relate to the tasks that we kind of do day to day. Um, are you able to take this into account at all if I send this over to you? Have or, you got copies for you today or can you email uh, them? I can email them if they... Yeah. Super, that's fine. Again, it might not be relevant. Obviously, we're looking for a certain skill base. Yes. If we've got to get rid of two people. But let me have a look. I'll digest it. I'll see. And obviously, I will take it into account. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Thank you. No, that's fine. And obviously, the last one on here um, was your attitude. And that's not just the attitude of others. It's your attitude to the company, your attitude to work, everything, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I have a good attitude towards work. I, I always try and help others in the team. I get along with everyone. I'm polite and I enjoy dealing with, with all of our customers. I've never been told of any issues with my attitude. In fact, I've been praised at times recently by my line manager, which which has been nice. Like I said last year, I didn't really take, maybe I didn't take too well to the conversations about being absent. I had a lot kind of going on in my personal life and I was under a lot of pressure at the time. Um, but that really was a one-off aside from this. I mean, I can't recall any anything further than that or any obvious issues. No, that's fine. Again, this has got nothing to do with you. This isn't a performance management meeting. This is just because obviously we've got to look at all four of you. We've got no major issues with all of you, but obviously we've got to determine yeah. on these who's slightly better. And it doesn't mean somebody's got an issue. Okay. So is there anything else you want me to add? Anything you want me to consider? Um, I don't think so at this point, but if I, if I do think of anything, because I mean, obviously, it's really, really quite a worrying time and things might come to me. So if, if that does happen, I suppose I could just, just contact you via email or give you a call or something. That's fine. Yes. Obviously, in the next couple of days, I will be meeting with the other staff. I'll be going through the same process with them and then be scoring. So obviously, I'm not saying you have to do it tonight, Lily, yes. obviously. But in the next couple of days, if you do think of anything, obviously, because I want to make sure I've got it before I do the scores. Yes. Yeah. So you'll want to know, obviously, what happens now. So basically, I obviously meet everybody else, have the same conversations with them. They'll have different skills, competences, all the issues I take into account. Yeah. Then I'll prepare the scores. And then the two people who've obviously scored the lowest, unfortunately, they will be provisionally selected for redundant. So what that means is they'll be invited to another meeting, which could result in their dismissal. Obviously, there'll still be a requirement to look for other alternatives, but obviously they'll carry on with the process. Whereas the other two who have scored higher, it will be the end of the process for them. They'll be safe and they'll keep their jobs. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, that, that does make sense. I understand the process. Thank you for explaining that. So you'll get a letter one way or another letting you know whether you, you know, you're safe or whether you're going to the next stage, but you will know what is going on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
So that's an example of how to conduct the, the consultation meeting itself. So obviously the exact matters that you're going to be expected to discuss in the consultation process is going to differ depending on the exact circumstances, naturally, the number of pools, who's at risk, etc. But in general, the general principles are that the first area that you need to be discussing, and as we saw today, and or just now in the correct way to conduct it, is the opportunity for the employee to comment on the basis of the selection criteria. So to actually have an input into that, and also potentially to provide their comments on the pool and the roles that are at risk of redundancy. Now, with this one, this pool, um, so the admin team is pretty straightforward. So there's not going to be too much contentious that can be said or done about that. It is the four admin roles that are at risk of redundancy being reduced to two. On the criteria front, as I said, as we saw there, Mrs. Boss Katie went through the criteria with Lily in order to get her comments on it. That's what consultation is all about. So. What we recommend is that you use objective um, criteria that's capable of, I suppose, independent verification. You can back up why you're giving that individual a particular score. So it could be linked to an appraisal. It could be linked to, as we've seen, the live disciplinary record over the last 12 months, attendance records as well. Um, and as Katie explained, she'd be scoring it with also the input of the team leader. So often two individuals are going to be carrying out the scoring of the employee at risk of redundancy to have an average of both scores to then provide that to the individual. So the criteria that we went through and what Katie explained, uh, particularly in terms of the potential discriminatory um, criteria, so taking into account the um, attendance record that included absences due to epilepsy was that the business wasn't going to take those into account, um, which is which is good news, obviously, because ten, potentially if that was used, it could lead to an indirect uh, disability discrimination claim or a discrimination arising from disability claim ultimately. So Lily had an input and an opportunity to, to challenge and input on certain things as part of that criteria. And really, as Katie said, she had an opportunity to think about any suggestions that she may want to make on potential ways to avoid the redundancy. It may be the case that she has an idea that would keep more admin roles. We don't know that they need to be asked that and that put to them as well. And really it's an opportunity as part of the consultation process for the employee to raise and put forward any concerns that they may have with the proposal and maybe the consultation process itself. So we've seen the um, matrix that's going to be used um, and that's now gonna be go away, go away and score that. Often, or well, there's two different approaches that you can now do. You can get the scoring process completed and arrange another meeting with the individual to run through the scores and therefore where they finish within the pool. Or you can write to the individual and say, here's the scores, here's the table, this is where you finished and invite them to a further meeting in which to discuss it and confirm that they're potentially at risk of redundancy. Now, this brings us to our final poll of today, your final piece of input before question and answers a bit later on. If you can start the poll, please, Taryn. And that's, as a business, are you legally obliged and should you invite the employee formally to a potential dismissal meeting by reason of redundancy? just give you a bit longer to answer that either yes you are obliged or no you are not if we leave that and that one there thanks Taryn so 94% of you are technically not correct um, so there's no legal obligation on a business to formally invite an employee to a potential dismissal meeting by reason of redundancy. So the ACAS Code of Practice on Disciplinary Grievance Procedures doesn't apply 
to a redundancy process and dismissals by reason of redundancy. So the only um, principles that govern a fair consultation process, so procedural fairness, com comes from case law. And there's also no legal right to be accompanied at the final meeting either, if you, if you do formally invite them. Um, but having said that, it's certainly good practice to invite someone to a potential um, dismissal meeting and also give them the right to be accompanied. Not legally, you're not legally obliged to, but it is certainly good practice. And, and there's a varying approach of really what businesses do and don't do in that situation. So on the screen now, you should hopefully be able to see the final invite to the potential dismissal meeting. So within the letter itself, um, it provides a bit of summary of where you are today. So again, you are summarising and going over the reasons and the rationale for the redundancy itself. So again, if you think worst case scenario, uh, when a judge is reviewing the documents, the paperwork as part of a hearing bundle, they can see all throughout from your at-risk uh, at risk letter to your invite to a potential final meeting and then the dismissal letter to the which we'll get on to is it was very clear throughout what the justification was for the redundancy itself. So this, meet, this letter again re-emphasizes that. And it then encloses the scored matrix, so Lily's matrix that has been scored, um, and the pool um, confirmation as well, as well, that she finished unfortunately in the bottom two, and she was therefore provisionally selected for redundancy. The letter finally provides <coughs> a date for the final hearing and gives them the right to be accompanied. So here on screen now, we've got the, the summary of the pool overall. So we've got all admin team members scores, and that shows where Lily has finished with her score of 17, that she's highlighted that she is unfortunately in the bottom two and that she's provisionally selected for redundancy. So Lily's now received that via email with that information. She's been invited to a final meeting. So back over to Katie for the final meeting. Right, Lily, thank you for coming to today's meeting. Yeah, there's no problem. So what I want to do at the beginning is just recap what we've done, okay. what's happened so far to make sure that you understand everything. So obviously you were put at risk of redundancy. Um, I explained to you the fact that there was a reduction in work and loss of profits. So I explained the business reason for the review I then said we were gonna do a consultation process, which means, you know, we both talk, we engage, yeah. we take into account what you've got to say. Yes. I explained that we were gonna consider all the alternatives and I've const constantly been looking for other ways we can avoid this, Lily. Um, unfortunately, we're making redundancies in other departments. So at the moment, there are no vacancies. All right. We're only a small business anyway, um, but obviously, because we're losing other people, there's just no jobs there. Obviously, I'll keep looking, but at the moment, there's no suitable alternative employment available. Um, you and the other three administrators, the pool of four, we applied selection criteria to you. And we had a meeting, didn't we, where we went through all that? Yeah, yeah, we did. So do you feel that you understand the reason? Do you feel that you understand the process? Yes, obviously. I mean, it's a lot It's a lot to take in. Um, very well worried, um, but I've understood, understood the process. Yeah, I've had an opportunity to kind of give you my thoughts and engage in, yeah, in okay. meetings. And obviously the last letter that we sent you, it informed you that unfortunately you'd scored the second lowest and it gave you a copy of your score sheet and where you were in relation to your other team members, didn't it? So yeah, you know you scored 17, unfortunately that was the second lowest. So I'd read an opportunity to read all that. Yeah, I've read, I've read through um, yeah, all the letters. Okay, and you've got no issues with that? No, I mean, I just wondered kind of what happens, what happens from now? Are you able to explain explain that? Will I just leave? Am I paid normally next month? Do I receive kind of anything to, to help tide me over, I suppose, whilst I'm trying to find a new job? Right, okay. Well, first of all, then I have to confirm that unfortunately, because there are no there are no alternatives, you're going to be made redundant. So you'll be dismissed by reason of redundancy. So it's a no-fault termination. 
obviously we've been ticking the boxes, following the procedures, getting legal advice from the amazing lawyer Katie Davis. <laughs> And obviously now we've got to confirm your redundancy. So right. what that means is you'll receive five weeks notice because you've been with us for five years. So it's a week for every year of employment. Okay. So you'll work your notice as normal and your five weeks will start now. OK, so your end date will be the end of those five weeks. OK, okay? that will obviously be subject to normal deductions and go through payroll. You'll also receive what's called a statutory redundancy pay. Now that's based on your age, you're only 25, and obviously your um, um, length of service, which is five years, and also your weekly salary. So what I'm going to do, Lily, is I'm going to send you a letter setting this all out, because obviously you probably aren't taking it in right now. No. Yeah. Okay. It would help, I think, a letter. But I will let you know, your statutory redundancy is £1,384.60p. Again, it will set that out in the letter, and that's going to be paid tax-free. So you don't pay anything on that. So you'll get your notice paid that your work be deducted, and then you'll get your tax-free redundancy. Now, you can go at any time on the gov.uk website, and it's got a redundancy calculator, and you can put all those details in and just double-check it. Because, I mean, obviously, we've got this checked by the lawyers. Um, but, you know, if you want to be reassured that we're doing it correctly. Yeah. So a letter's going to come out to you explaining that you're going to be made redundant, explaining all of that um, and confirming the process we followed. So does that make sense? Yeah. Again, I mean, obviously, like you said, it's, it's a lot to take in. I'm quite worried about everything. But, yeah, the process process makes sense. Um. I'm not, say, I'm not saying either way, obviously I'll go away and try and digest everything. Um, am I able to challenge the decision at all? Is this kind of the end of the process or, yeah? No, yes, you will have a right of appeal. It will set it out in the letter. So what that means is you need to think about it. And if you're not happy about anything, um, you've got a right to appeal. Now, if you appeal, you need to write down the reasons why. And then that will go to somebody else. That will go to Mrs. Big Boss, who's bigger boss than me. Um, and she will obviously go through all that. Um, and then she'll be independent and she'll review it all in a separate meeting. I won't be involved in that process, Lily. Okay. So if you want to do that, that's your legal rights. And again, it will it'll lay that all out in the letter. Okay. So I haven't got a letter with me now because obviously I didn't know if anything was going to change in today's meeting. But obviously the letter will follow on from today's meeting. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and thank you ever so much for all your loyalty that you've given the company and I wish you well in your future, Lily. Okay, thank you. So that was the final meeting that we saw there between Mrs Boss and uh, Lily, the employee. Um, so again, ran through or re-summarise what the background was, the rationale for why um, Lily was unfortunately selected and confirmed redundancy at the end of it that will be confirmed in writing and will be followed up in writing. And as Katie said, the reason that the letter wasn't given at that meeting to her was to, again, provide the reassurance, I suppose, that no dismiss final decision had been made. And if Lily had issues to raise, realistically um, to best protect itself an employer should go away to consider those and potentially cover off those issues within the dismissal letter itself so again it just provides a bit of protection for you as the employer as the business to be able to demonstrate that itself and um, Taryn if we could just share the dismissal letter on the screen again so again hopefully you can see some of that but as I said earlier on, again, it's really important. I always recommend that a summary is provided on the background uh, to justify why the company's within the uh, redundancy definition and why it's been impacted this time by COVID and reduced sales. Um, and to explain again why Lily's been selected for redundancy, where she's finished within the pool and what her scores were. Um, the dismissal is also unlikely to be fair, if the business, if the employer gave no consideration to any potential suitable, suitable alternative positions or vacancies within the business as well. So Katie mentioned that there are unfortunately no other alternatives that they could consider or look at. And again, that should be covered off in the final dismissal letter. So many times we will see when we're advising both businesses and employees, 
just very blank and generic letters that have been, been provided to the employee, providing really the minimal detail on why they've been dismissed. The more information and the more tailored it is, the better, and the better protection it is for you again as the business in justifying that there's been a fair dismissal. And again, the letter, as you can see on the second page, should be setting out the termination arrangement. So when's the termination date? What's going to happen with the notice period as well? And also, what is the employee entitled to receive in terms of the statutory redundancy payment? And how has that been calculated itself? As I mentioned earlier on, there's no legal right to um, appeal against the decision because the ACAS code of practice doesn't apply to redundancy dismissals, but again, it's often good practice to include it, particularly where you think that the matter could be become contentious or litigated against. It's just demonstrating fairness, isn't it, in terms of the process that you are and you've adopted throughout. So again, just to summarise, um, some key tips that you should be thinking about when you're going through a redundancy consultation, as we've seen today. First one, plan in advance. Get the paperwork prepared in advance as well. So get the at-risk letter ready, get your scoring matrix documents ready and the criteria that you're going to do. As much prep as you can do ahead of the consultation is the better, really. Secondly, it's often useful to train and certainly have a meeting with the managers that are going to be carrying out the consultation process with the employees. I mean, it, it may be the team leaders that are doing it, uh, divisional um, bosses. We don't want to be seeing examples of Mrs. Bad Boss, as we saw today from Katie. We want to be seeing the good side of it, the good examples that we've seen. One area that people can forget about as well, is that you should include absent employees. So if you have anybody on long-term sickness absence or they're on maternity leave, they can be included within the consultation process and should be um, as well. Another initial step for you to consider is, do you want to ask for volunteers for redundancy at the very outset when you are announcing who is at risk? Do you want to invite the opportunity for people to volunteer for redundancy. It's often a useful way maybe to get early numbers of people that are volunteering for redundancy that you're willing to accept. And it just reduces your burden of consultation meetings that you then need to carry out throughout. So it's a good step often to make. And if somebody does apply for voluntary redundancy, you're not under an obligation to accept that application because you don't want to be losing people and skills that you need for the business to move forward and really hopefully grow in the future. Um, finally, probably on, on larger scale redundancies and particularly maybe if there's collective consultation requirements, so over 20 um, redundancies proposed, it's really useful and good to prepare a question and answer type document to issue to employees that can set out common questions, FAQs that they may ask again, to provide a bit of reassurance from the start about what may happen. And part of that is something that Katie mentioned um, in the consultation meeting today, is if there's wider support available to the individuals that are going through that consultation process. So is there wellbeing, welfare, counselling type services that those individuals can have access to, to help them throughout? But that concludes the scenario. So virtual round of applause to Katie and Lily, who are brilliant. If you'd like to give them a clap. Um, and really, that does conclude the process um, and the scenario to work through. So we'll have a look at some of the questions that have been raised through um, the scenario as we went along. And also, if you do want to ask a question live, raise your hand and Taryn will go live to you um, so that you can ask that. But if we start in the chat box, I'll go through some questions. <clears throat> um, do you want to answer this one, Katie, in your role as boss? Is there a recommended time scale to use um, for the disciplinary and attendance records that you're taking into account as part of the matrix? Well, thank, thank you for that question. No, there's not really a recommended time, but obviously if you've got employees who've been there for 10 years, 15 years, as we sometimes get, 
you know, if you go too far back, in a way it's historic um, and that could be unfair. So it's always better to use a period of, say, 12 months, um, which is obviously what I use today during the selection process. Because, I mean, if you're applying it to everybody, unless there's a particular reason why, it should be fair to everybody, as long as you remember to obviously take into account any disability-related absences. Now, the law says you don't have to discount them, but you need to, um, we normally say you, you give them some kind of discretion. So you might give them a slightly different score. You might adjust the score. So you have to take them into account. But you don't have to completely discount them. You just have to show that you've, you've reflected on the fact that they are dis disability related absences. So they have to be treated slightly differently. So, yeah, 12 months is a good period unless there's a reason why something exceptional has happened during that time. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, definitely agree with that, um, particularly with um, looking at any live disciplinary records as well, that realistically final written warnings, 12 months, so you wouldn't go back any further than that. Um, probably the next two questions relate to each other, actually, uh, quite usefully, which I'll pick up. So um, Claire asks, wouldn't we use length of service and attendance as the last factors to measure against? which then ties in with what Sheena's said, is do all matrix questions have the same weight or some, for example, performance and attitude worth, say, 40% each and length of service, say, 10%. So yes, for both of you, there's, there's different appro approaches that people have in terms of a scoring matrix. Some you will see where the business wants to attach a higher weight um, to certain criteria. So if you really want to keep um, a skills base within the business, you'd probably attach a higher weighting, say 40% as Sheena's used in her example, to things like, um, is the employee a quick worker that we saw today, performance and maybe attitude. So you, you're paying more attention to that rather than say their attendance um, record or their disciplinary record. And Claire, that really ties in what, with what you said, is that you may have a lower weight for length of service um, and attendance. So you're really keeping the people and the skills that you want within the business rather than giving it it's all an equal weighting when you're reaching your outcome. So that's a, another approach that you can take in terms of matrix and the selection process itself. Um, next question, Katie, do you want to answer this one from Maxine? It's, does someone on maternity leave have an automatic right to be offered one of the two roles available? Oh, well done, Maxine. That's a good question. Um, yes. So basically, without making it really legal being a lawyer, um, yes, somebody who's on maternity leave has a special kind of protection. So it's called Regulation 10. And what it means is if somebody's on maternity leave and they are at risk of redundancy, if they are in a pool with people and you, in this situation, say with Lily, you had four admin team and you're keeping two, the person on maternity leave has the right to get the job over the other people. So that person gets protected and they get the job. So in that situation, say Lily was on maternity leave, she would automatically get one of those jobs and be safe. And then the other three will be fighting over one job. So it only applies when you're doing the same role. So if you've got people in different roles, it might be that, you know, regulation 10 doesn't apply. And it only applies when people are on maternity leave. But yes, there is a special, it's like a positive form of discrimination. It's the only type under, under law. So you have to be very careful if you've got somebody on maternity leave and they're at risk of redundancy. Thanks, Katie. Um, <laughs> Sheena asks, um, presumably the dismissal letter should mention accrued holiday pay and whether it be set against notice. So yeah, the, the dismissal letter should set out if there's accrued and taken holiday and what will happen with that. So will it be paid in lieu if the individual is working their notice period and the sufficient time to give them double the amount of notice of the holiday that's left to take that you can ask them to take it during that notice period. And it's also important to specify the exact days that will be nominated as the holiday entitlement as well, um, because you're obliged to do that um, under the working time regs. Um, so yes, it should state that within the dismissal letter itself. 
Um, Katie, do you want to go with this one from Glenn? Do you have to issue um, the scoring matrix or only issue if a copy is requested by the employee? Right, thanks, Glenn. Um, yes, no, there is no legal requirement to give it. Again, it's all about good practice. And we tend to find that the more that you are transparent, um, and the more that they have the right to have their say and know what they're being scored of and can take it away and can think about it, the less challenge we tend to see at a later date. The cases that Ollie and I get really the ones where it's not being communicated properly, people haven't known what the matrix is, they haven't had the right to have their say. So you don't necessarily have to give them a physical copy to take away, um, but it, you know it's good practice to at least that they know before. And if you do give them a copy, at least they can digest it later. Because as you saw in today's, role play it becomes a bit of a shock for the you know the individual so the fact they can go away and think about it and um, it makes the process fairer but no legal requirement no it's just good practice i was thinking more yeah, absolutely it's... The, sorry i was thinking more on that question about the actual final score oh the scores oh sorry glenn yes yeah, so no again you don't have to give you have to notify the individual where they've scored so obviously you have to tell Lily in this situation, you know, you've scored, you know, in, this, in the bottom two um, and you, you don't have to give a copy of the other scores from the other team. However, again, if you don't, it looks like you've got something to hide. Um, every employee is different. But I mean, if you had a tribunal case, you'd have to disclose it at a later date anyway. And if you can stand by your scores in a way, why wouldn't you disclose them? But um, some employers don't. Again, it's just, it's good practice probably to provide as much information to the um, person who is at risk um, as you can really, because at least they, it's more transparent. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> Thumbs up. Um, Kate asks, over what period of time should this whole process take? So there's, there's no set um, time scales that you have to follow as an employee to go through a consultation process is what's fair under the, and reasonable under the circumstances. So for the one, the, the process that we've seen today, um, where you have a pool, um, you're going to be having to score the individuals, then discuss the scores with them. It's going to take around two weeks um, to go through that with them through to the dismissal. But as long as you can satisfy that you've carried out fair and meaningful consultation in that period, whatever that may be, that's the key. You're not tied down in this case by minimum requirements of consultation time periods because we're under that 20 um, employees at risk of redundancy threshold for collective consultation to kick in. Um, if anybody else wants to raise their hands to ask a question live, then please do. You've got the opportunity to do so. We've got a few minutes left before we're due to end. Um, Maxine asks, Katie, do you want to pick this one up? Um, if someone is on long-term sick and physically unable to attend a consultation meeting, can we do it over the phone? Thanks, Maxine. Um, yes, I mean, we're, we're seeing at the moment with COVID more and more different ways of carrying out these meetings. We're having lots of um, meetings by virtual means, telephone or video conference. So, um, yes, you've got to make sure that you offer in different ways. You've got to ensure that you're trying to consult. So if somebody can't attend, you've got to offer them alternatives. If ultimately they don't want to take part in a virtual or a telephone call, um, then you can do no more. But yes, you've definitely got to offer other ways to individuals to ensure that they have the right to be consulted. Yeah, I think most of the redundancies that we saw last year after the initial lockdown and the redundancies that flowed on from that during the course of last year were mainly done via video. So Zoom, Teams and the like, because people weren't getting together face to face due to COVID restrictions. So, yeah, it's perfectly reasonable and acceptable to do so. Um, anybody else that would like to ask a question? If not, um, as I said, we've got Glenn. Oh, Glenn. Sorry, I just just unmuted. But regarding the, the number of twenty in the collective redundancy process, if we have a business that has different regions, there's different business units within. So we've got um, a North, a South, and a Midlands-based region. Can you separate them out as individuals? So say if the, if the North had 
eight people and the South had 12. Does that come under the 120 or do you take them as individual business units? The, I'll, I'll pick that one up, Katie. Um, it, it depends, yeah. So the, the case law on it is whether they're classed as separate establishments. So it ultimately depends how connected overall are they to each other. So is it a case that they're very distinct and separate depots and divisions, for example, that are spread over the country, or all, are all they all of them under the same business entity itself? So if they're very much separate depots, they are separate divisions that are split between the country, you can treat them as separate um, entities and therefore you won't have the cons collective consultation requirements. Okay, so the individuals for each business unit would have an employee letter saying that they operate from a particular office, would that then be classed as separate entities? Yeah, it can be. Yeah, so you wouldn't have to count it for collective requirements and you can consult separately with those units, yes. Okay, thank you. If that is everything, thank you very much everybody for attending today. As I said at the very beginning, uh, we'll send out the document packs um, via email at the end so that you can have a look through the, the letters and also the matrix that we used today. Thank you very much to Katie and Lily for acting out those parts. Um, also Taryn in the background doing all the technical stuff with the polls and sharing things on screen. But thanks very much for attending everybody and we'll be in contact with um, our next webinar in the future. Thanks everybody. Bye guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you everybody.